So let's get down to it and talk about the instruments themselves. So if I can have the first graphic. One of the constraints of doing this mission is that we have this fantastic rover that's already designed. And so the instruments that go on the rover have to be able to fit within the, uh, the spacecraft itself. And so there are volume constraints, mass constraints, and that sort of thing. And the good news is, is that we're able to select seven instruments that address the four goals that I mentioned. And so what I'll do is I'll go through them in kind of a counterclockwise way, starting with instruments that are on the mast of the rover. There's two of those. And then there's three instruments in the body of the rover. And then out on the arm are two more uh, scientific instruments. So let's uh, start going through them. On the mass, next graphic, we have mass cam Z. This is a multispectral binocular imager that uh, has fantastic zoom capabilities. And so this will be on the rover, uh, 12 different wavelengths or filter wheels on it to, uh, to do multispectral, multicolor. Uh, the zoom capability is what's new to this camera. And the zoom capability, what it does, it makes it possible to rapidly develop terrain models so that you can plot your path and efficiently tra travel a, a longer, safer distance on Mars. So this will really help with mission operability, besides just being a fantastic camera for giving us panoramas and close-ups. Uh, the next graphic, the other mass instrument is SuperCam. Um, it's actually a proper name for uh, this amazing instrument. On Curiosity right now, we have an instrument that's, um, does, that's called ChemCam that does laser-induced mass spectroscopy. What it does is it ionizes a little bit of the rock, and you can tell by looking at the plasma what the elemental composition is. This instrument takes that capability and goes, at mu goes much further and then it's also incorporated a Raman spectrometer, which can identify minerals, and also a visible and near IR spectrometer, which also can do minerals. So it now has an added capability besides um, having sort of a telescope on it that it can look up close to materials that it's zotted with its laser. So this, gives, this makes it a, a tremendously useful remote sensing instrument where you can now look at things before you, rocks before you, and understand the elemental composition and also the mineralogy and make some informed decisions about um, whether or not a particular rock is important. And added to that is also the capability to detect organics. So this is tremendous for going forward to helping the mission plan on where to take the real samples, that sort of thing. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the body of the rover then if we show the next graphic, this is MOXIE. This is the um, Human Exploration Operation Mission Directorate and this um, Space Technology Mission Directorate contribution of being able to take Mars atmosphere, take CO2 out of the atmosphere, break it apart, and uh, produce pure oxygen. So this is going to be extremely useful for future rocket fuel from, from Mars, or when we have humans exploring Mars, they can also make great use of that oxygen. We all love that stuff. Uh, so this is a, a real step forward in, in helping future human exploration of Mars by, by being able to produce your oxygen on the surface of Mars. Uh, the next graphic, this is the Spanish contribution of a weather station, and it has things that you would expect, such as temperature, humidity, wind speed, but what's some other, uh, and pressure, but also it's going to be able to characterize the dust and also look at the environment, the uh, temperature of the surrounding environment. And so this gives us a very good idea of what's going on in weather-wise on Mars and it helps for future exploration, but also it'll be important to understanding how well our Mars oxygen experiment is doing, MOXIE, how well it's working by also making at atmospheric measurements that help inform that efficiency. Okay, so in the third instrument, next slide, showing um, what's on the rover body. This is RIMFAX. This is a uh, ground-penetrating radar. 
Uh, this has a very interesting capability of being able to penetrate maybe down to half a kilometer beneath the surface with a resolution anywhere from 5 to 20 centimeters. So we're going to get a look for the first time in the subsurface with a rover of the areas that we're traveling over with this instrument. And one of the interesting things is, is that then you'll be able to connect different outcrops that you see to see whether or not something that looks similar on one end of a basin versus another, whether or not it's actually the same geological unit by being able to trace it with your ground penetrating radar. Okay, so now let's move to the rover arm where we have two instruments. One is Pixel. We see here an image of the sensor head. Um, fits in a box, fits on the rover head. If we go to the next image, this is what it does. Um, by doing the X-ray lithochemistry, it can map out the element distribution of any of the image that it's looking at, the rock that it's lo looking at, and put it on an image. So what this does is give you the interfaces, gives you the fine scale mineralogy. It tells you where the action is on, on the smaller scale. This is the, the scale at which actually life is, a microbial life is concerned. And then the last instrument uh, is Sherlock. This is a deep UV Raman uh, luminescent instrument. And so using this, you can get fine scale mineralogy, tells you what the minerals are, and also detect organics. So if we go to the last slide, we have a fantastic grouping of instruments where the selection of the instruments were to maximize the science capability of the rover itself. Not necessarily any one instrument is uh, it's great, but uh, it's how they play well together. So one of the interesting situations of how this is set up is no measurement, such as elemental chemistry, is done by only one instrument. No measurement of mineralogy is done by only one instrument. And no detection of organics is only done by one instrument. They overlap and they complement each other. They look at the measurements in slightly different ways. So you'll have a great confluence of what we see on Mars with this rover when we're looking at what's in the distance and when we get up close and look at the fine scale of the rocks that we're collecting. And all of this leads to picking out those rocks that we want to core and cache and bring, potentially, bring back to Earth. This has been a, a very involved process. Lots of proposals came in. We have a payload that has a great international representation, representation and well over 50 institutions worldwide involved. And I think it's going to be a fantastic mission. We're going to learn so much and uh, can't wait to really get going on the whole thing.